Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, we think this is a great uh, venture that's about to happen in the city of Faber. Uh, I just want to let, let me just give give you a picture of, of my what I believe is going to happen with all the great artwork that's happened. Uh, you know, at, over there by the stage and with the great Eric Berry properties actually having this actually very uh, drawn in it. Here's here's what I view. Uh, about two weekends ago, we had a, we had about forty thousand people to stretch stretch eight blocks. We had a parade that lasted two two hours. We had mayors and people. Uh, Derek Bose, the WAOK, had a, a female general, a U.S. Army general. And here's my, here's what I believe. This time next year, between the things that's going to happen that's already happened now, and what we believe will happen in the next twelve months. We're going to make a mark in this region that will be talked about for decades. That's exactly what I expect. That's exactly what me and the city council uh, is in, uh, are anticipating as it relates to heaven. Thank you so much for being here today because, again, we expect right now with an economic development plan, that's what me and the city managers are literally standing in the back talking about, the economic development plan that we're going to have for this corridor. This, uh, and I'm a lover of the arts, so I, uh, I, I, I want to thank Fulton County, our arts and culture department, as actually uh, playing a role as it relates to our youth in this area. And so between the youth area of arts, arts and culture at Fulton County, between your company and then and these great departments, I want to thank our city departments as playing a major role in not only bringing the people here, but basically bringing them here with substance and making a mark in this city that will be talked about for decades. So again, I could go on and go on, but uh, uh, you didn't come to hear me talk, but <laughs> but I, I want to thank uh, a council member that's here today, Linda Davis, but I just want to just say again, ladies and gentlemen, you've come to a city right now where I, not only are you going to see a level of professionalism, you're going to see a level of co cooperation. And again, this time next year, when the Fairburn Festival comes around, uh, my goal, and uh, everyone knows that this event, as long as I've been mayor in my previous term, uh, we went from uh, on a great day it was 500 people to now 40,000, and so our goal is for that to ultimately reach close to 60,000 people. That's that's my goal, <laughs> and so uh, I want to. Um, and with that being said, my goal is for the people to spend more time. As much as they're going to talk about the parade, my goal is for them to look at between the commercial district, all the artwork, and ask this one simple question: How in the world did you guys attract all this in one location? And I'll and we'll I'll have a, by this time next year I'll have an answer for. Them. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. Well, wonderful. We're going to play a quick video that our photographer at Dashboard did uh, just to give a recap of the project, illuminate spaces, and kind of where we're at with everything. Um, Roberto will introduce himself, and then we'll kind of go back and forth with some questions and topics that relate to not only this piece but also Roberto's practice in general. At the end, we would love to open it up to Q&A to all of you that have come tonight. If you have any uh, questions about Roberto's practice, about the artwork that's next door, um, or about the project Illuminated Spaces, please speak up. We would love to hear from you. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to you, Roberto, and just uh, give us a little recap of who you are. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I just, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you very much and for being patient with me getting here. Um, everything, just me getting here was kind of, it's been kind of surreal because I was living in South Florida for about five years and I went there to get my master's. I moved away in 2015 and um, I was finished my master's, wrapped up was teaching and then um, COVID happened and my family is here and my friends are all here. So I came back and I was like, I'll oh, just quarantine and stay here with my family during while everything was shut down. And um, I had romanticized being away for so long. I had romanticized the city and everything that I had experienced here and um, and all these opportunities that are here and everything was basically pulling me back. So it's really surreal to be here uh, right now and just kind of getting into a community and kind of immersing myself in a different way with a different perspective. Um, I was born in Queens, New York, but I was raised here in Georgia. So like I'm totally country, you know, <laughs> and um, so like country and Peruvian, I'm first generation Peruvian. So country accent on a Peruvian, you know, it's... Um, <laughs> It just happens. And it's and that also has been surreal, you know, like um, 
it's it's really really triggered a lot of the themes in my work um whether that's my sexual identity or my spirituality or just my heritage itself and just being comfortable within my own skin but yeah amazing thank you so much thank you <laughs> so talking about this idea your piece is titled portals um mm -hmm. Talking about this, when I think of a portal, I think of this exchange of energies, of ideas, an exchange of something. So in creating this piece, is that something that came to mind when, when you were putting it together and thinking about it? Is this exchange with the community that you were presenting it to? And if so, what was, how did that tie into the work? Yeah, um, creating, so I make the, the portals that I create, it basically a portal in my, with Linking it to my spirituality, it's called um, a boveda, and that is linked to Santeria mainly. And um, basically, this portal is the way that we communicate with not just our ancestors, but with um, with loved ones that have passed, and or just how we commune with our religion, you know. And it was a way for me. It's also a form of healing and something to refer to when you're down or when you need assistance or anything like that. It's just something that is that we have as altars that we present um, like on a table or by our bed or whatever, wherever. And I, I wanted to take the advantage of just having a space and being in a community that's inviting me to be a part of it and, and to include and have it be inclusive to everyone and not just, I, it is behind a window, but still, it's it's warm and it's inviting, and it's meant for everyone to come see it. You know, so a lot of a lot of what I create kind of ties into those themes on being inclusive and creating these spaces and environments that allow everyone to be immersed within. It's beautiful, Thanks. and yeah, <laughs> no, that's you. it's such a you know you talk about too also how. It's important to you to include that kind of healing, transformative aspect to your work. And so you're touching on that a little bit with this exchange. But then how does also your sexual identity, your heritage, um, and your own personal persona play into the work, into the creation of the work? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the themes that I try to that I tap into basically in my whether that's my Peruvian heritage or my spirituality, which are one in one. And my sexuality also being queer um, and being a person of color too, you know, all there's there's so much behind every individual theme that I'm touching on, a lot of history behind that. So there's a lot of um, shared trauma that I think that everyone kind of goes through. And, you know, like I, when I started kind of diving into all these themes, it was, it was definitely wasn't easy, yeah. <laughs> but it was something that I had to face and something that I had to confront and, you know, like a, like a confessional confrontation, you know, and I, it was important for me to dive into that history so that I would be more informed and to tell my own story with my perspective and not someone else telling it, mm -hmm. you know? So it was, um, you know, kind tying back into, you know, just these themes it's it's coming from a place of trauma but it's also um encourages to grow and heal and you know get past it you know and it's it's about evolving and transitioning you know and turning into a person that you weren't like maybe a month ago or five minutes ago you know yeah and it's so interesting that you talk about how a lot of this is coming from a place of trauma because you also talk about creating in the light of positivity mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, has there ever been a time that you've been kind of mid-process and creating something and you realize that it's, has that positivity created a pivot into the end result of the work? I, so I kind of, um, that was its own journey when I, when I was starting to create my work and making these installations because I, I kind of struggled with the spaces that I, that I wanted to, that I guess the end goal being. Mm -hmm. And when I first started making these spaces, I was um, working with more visceral forms and um, and they it became a little grotesque, mm -hmm. you know, and I it was kind of repelling folks, you know, even though it was coming from a place that I was trying to tie in tension with trauma and healing and just um, I wanted to show that in a physical form, but I didn't want to. 
I didn't want to repel anyone. So like my work's always kind of teetered between the lines of like um, the grotesque and the ethereal, you know, and I think that stemming it with my religion and healing and my healing practice, um, it's it's really important to show that side because I want others to experience it also, you know, and not be pushed away by it, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, speaking to portals, uh, it certainly feels like a healing piece when you're looking at it. Again, it, look, it feels like you should be receiving something, something mm -hmm. of a positive nature with the light and the illumination that's reflecting off the marble. I'm actually curious <laughs> about specifically, you know, different than I've seen with some of your other work. Mm -hmm. You did activate this, the ground and kind of more the space around the piece. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I was, um, I have, so I have been wanting to make a piece like this for a long time. So thank you all so much <laughs> for just even letting me do this. <laughs> um, it's, God, I, I mean, I, so many like tears and blood, <laughs> you know, like working through this, working through all this, um, just creating this piece um, and, you know, like um, insecurities and everything that we have to go through. Um, it's, you know, like that's just a part of every day and um, it, the reflection and it was really important for me to cast a reflection mm -hmm. um, within the space because I wanted to show that it is a double, it's, it's a it's a medium, you know, like it's a, it's the medium between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. And that's what our bovedas are. And, you know, so I wanted to cast that reflection and show that other world, but kind of force the audience to kind of peek through and, and find it, you know, in the mm -hmm. detail. Um, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> and, and then you're also talking about this. It's a medium. It provides the medium. It provides the avenue for, for, energies and spirits and people to come through is what mm -hmm. I understand and in thinking about mm -hmm. that you're talking about a place that is hallowed in a way and and a respected space are there processes that you go through in the creation of your work to pre prepare your mind and your body and your spirit for the creation of these pieces uh, <laughs> yeah god it's 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 pretty wild um, because a lot of the pieces that I make I have I have an idea for you know and I expected it just like any it just like if you're working with painting or if you're making a physical form um, we have an idea of what it is going to be mm -hmm. um, with making a spa uh, making an installation like this or just working in installations by spe site specific especially it's um, it's hard because the once you start when these once these elements come together that's when the space tells me what it needs from me mm -hmm. you know so i i i am there and this is really the first time that i've had this i had you and robert with me yeah. and i'm not used to working with anyone <laughs> around so i'm used to like being in my head and kind of freaking out on my own <laughs> um, <laughs> um but it's it was just it was it was a learning experience for me too and um a lot of these elements, um, it it came together, and I I was I was so grateful for it. But before I go into anything like that, even when I am doubting myself, and um, when the piece is at its ugly phase, um, I I just have to sit back and like just let myself know that it's going to change and it's going to be like what I want it to be, and then more. You know, but I would say with this piece, oh. even the ugly phase, <laughs> as you're calling it, was really was, beautiful. <laughs> Just the skeleton of the piece alone was I know, I, a really wonderful experience. I know. That part when we all saw it up, I, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't want it to come down. I, I didn't want to put anything on it. It's like you didn't want to cover it up. Yeah, no, I, it's like exactly. wait, this is like a, the was, skeleton is beautiful. I was like, can I just leave it and call it? Which up? just the layers of production there yeah. is, I feel, relates so strongly to your actual practice. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. again, that preparation to getting to that final product. Yeah, it's not about just A to B. It's mm -hmm. about all the spaces in between, which are so beautiful. And yeah. it was beautiful to watch you create. Oh, thank you. And pivot too, you know, it <laughs> mm -hmm. wasn't just you had an idea and then it was created. It yeah. was like you said, it was a whole process of exploring. Yeah. And exploration. You, I, I have to be open. And then I, le I learned that the hard way I have to be open to these things, because if not, then I'll really it'll it'll I'll be overwhelmed, you know, like way too overwhelmed. And um, just I learn from it, you yeah. know, like I, every single time I put something up, I you know, like I learned from you, I learned from Robert, you know, like um, it's, it was, it's all about, we are evolving together, you know, so, and that's what helped me create too, so. And being yeah. open to that mm -hmm. exploration. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that was going to be my next question is with every piece you make, because they are so, 
unique visceral they're right there and you feel every fold of the cloth mm -hmm. do they change you in some way upon completion do you find that it's embedding itself you know within you yeah. to carry on to the next piece it's it's so funny because like we'll we'll as artists you know we'll we'll create something in our minds and in our instincts our guts you know and we create through intuition or we create through our skill and craft. Um, I, I had an idea of what I wanted this to look like. And before like the unveiling, before the, everything came down, you know, like I was just seeing it like during the day and, you know, and it was, and it was lit, but it was still like, I could see the light coming out of it. I just, um, I couldn't see like a lot of the details that I wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, so once the unveiling happened and it was open to everyone, um, the first time that I saw it at night, it it hit me really hard because it was like, I it's so nice to meet you. You know, <laughs> like it's so nice to meet you. Like this is what um this is what this is how I envisioned something to be. And to see it physically in front of me for everyone to see, you know, it's just, um, it's just a treat, a gift. I was, I was like in tears. I really was. <laughs> well, it's definitely one of those pieces. It, it captures you and it's yeah, mesmerizing. And I hope that you all have a chance to step by next door once the sun gets a little bit lower and see it at night because it really is, it creates a whole new world for you to mm -hmm. venture into. Um, and pivoting a little bit from kind of that energetic spiritual nature of the work, you come from three generations of wood flooring, <laughs> which yes. I'm curious because so often that is a very <clears throat> masculine facing career industry mm -hmm. uh, skill, right? Mm -hmm. um, but your work, and which I know that the wood flooring industry, what your knowledge of that industry influences mm -hmm. your work, but how is that dichotomy between this very masculine field and then bringing that knowledge into these very soft and generous and and inviting forms yeah. with drapery and twisting can you talk a little <laughs> bit about that yeah it's um well i'll just say it's a pleasure queering things yeah. you know like i you know like i grew up I, you know like uh, first generation here in peru my whole family has been coming in um there's this uh machismo mentality to being masculine, being this man, hiding your feelings, hiding everything, don't cry, like just everything, you know, and God forbid if you're gay, you know. Um, so it was um, growing up and working and doing floors, like, and just then continue doing it and helping my brother out till this day. It's, um, I, it, it's kind of, it's empowering, you know, like I bring something different to this craft um, and I'm able to like, Play, I'm able, and I learned a lot, and that's it. I'm able to build because of it, you know. And it's it's just coming to terms with everything that's attached to it, and just repelling what I don't accept from that, you know. Um, but like I said, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure querying the spaces and the material that I use. So it's um, the material. It's all paper, and this material I found it. Um, when I was going through grad school, I was working with these hypermasculine materials and I wanted, I, I was just trying to find a material that'll kind of sit like fabric. Mm -hmm. And I was tr painting my studio one day and I bought this drop cloth and I was super poor and I got the cheapest one or one of the most, like not as expensive. And it was this paper poly drop cloth and I had it and I was folding it and laying it out and I, saw it and it was probably one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen, even covered with paper. And I kind of threw it over like one of the lamps that I had in my studio and it glowed really beautifully. And, and from there, and the material is called super tough, you know? So like, <laughs> it's called super tough. So I was like, um, yeah. And it, it was by accident and it, it found me. So I was like, uh, I yeah, <laughs> I love it. I, I feel love like that it. happens all the yeah, time. Yeah. When artists, super when, tough. I, yeah, as an artist as well, when we're at, we're like <laughs> most broke and, you know, we're getting these materials that we think would never work yeah. and they end up being the perfect It was fit. gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So on top of being a visual, uh, physical artist with um, your installations, your drawing, your paintings, mm -hmm. you also are a performance artist. Mm -hmm. We didn't, we weren't able to fit in a performance <laughs> for this iteration of your work, but can you speak about how performance integrates into work like this and mm -hmm. maybe a performance 
from the past that you're especially proud of or loved or changed your practice? Yeah, in any way? of course. Um, thank you for asking that. <laughs> a lot. Um, when I first started, when I was doing my undergrad, I got my I got I received my undergrad in drawing, painting, and printmaking. And when I was moving on, one of the last pieces that I created when I finished my bachelor's was my first installation, and I. I ended up, um, when if four or five years later, when I went to grad school, I proposed uh, my paintings or the themes beyond my work, which is, they were really figurative and, yeah, figurative and dramatic, you know? And I wanted them to become spaces where it's immersive and folks, every, anyone can enter and become part of it. So that's what I spent most of my time doing in undergrad is creating the space where where it wasn't just immersive and it wasn't just, um, you know, like forms put up, but I also wanted to turn it into something that means a little bit more that that ties into directly into my Peruvian heritage and also my spirituality. Um, the shamanistic part of my practice it basically is just going to a curandero or healer and you basically go on with this idea or this um, hope that they will tap into whatever energy they need to help you heal. And I became extremely obsessed and fascinated by that idea and just having someone, a healer, or just you can heal in any kind of way. You don't need a healer, you know, like music, art, conversations heal, you know. Um, I became extremely fascinated by that idea of our bodies changing and evolving within us. And I wanted to physically create that space where the shaman is within our bodies and they're helping, they're worth tapping into that energy, you know? So a lot of the performances, my idea behind the performance is always um, create of course, like the scene, the environment, and then activated by performing in these spaces and bringing it to life, yeah. you know, and showing that tension and that ritual and that practice. But yeah, can't I? I could do it on the sidewalk, I guess. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or like, I was maybe, like, do you have you know, an idea? Know, what the hell? <laughs> Two a.m. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get out there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one other thing, talking about interacting with the piece, um, that I noticed this in comparison to other works that you've done, is that often you'll work with one gateway or mm -hmm. one structure. Um, this has multiple what feels like gateways, mm -hmm. um, hence portals. But what was the diversion there into moving into kind of more access points here? Yeah, I, I see it as, I see them as... Um, like fate, you know, like these different roads, these different paths that you create, um, depending on what you're healing from, what you're coming from. Um, but I also was really, really thinking about all of my siblings. And originally, like I wanted to, um, and my nieces and nephews, I wanted to have a drum head for each one of my family, which I will eventually do. Um, but I have a huge family <laughs> and um, I, yeah, so, and plus I become obsessed with um, balance, you know, and of course I have to think about the composition and what everyone's going to see like months from down the road, mm -hmm. you know, so I, a lot of it came from, of course, I always think of the shaman within a space, within our bodies, healing, tapping into an energy and my work becoming these oversized altars that we become almost like a miniature within, mm -hmm. you know? So that's that's how I always envision it. And I always, I see this as a perfect way for it to show different avenues that that can take, you know? And then the spaces are always changing too mm -hmm. with where your work <clears throat> is. And moving back from Miami, back to kind of home mm -hmm. in Atlanta, you know? Um, <laughs> How has the reception been, do you feel, with working in this kind of space, um, working in Atlanta and Fairburn? How do you feel about, you know, that as a whole and the reception coming back from Miami to, yeah. to the Georgia South? I'm not going to. Right now, it's incredible. <laughs> right now, it's incredible. Um, I am just really grateful to be invited in this community the way that and just to receive all this all this 
positive feedback that I've gotten from everybody. Even when I come here late at night and I'm just sitting in front of it, um, I folks just stop and ask me questions, you know, um, or just ask me what it is, not knowing that I created it. I think they're just asking me, like, what are you looking at? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, and you uh, go into, yeah. well, <laughs> this is what I see. <laughs> But it was um, it was it was really scary at first. Um, I wasn't I wasn't in my I, I know that I was meant to be back here, you know, but I I wasn't planning on moving back to Georgia. I was um, I was kind of I saw myself moving, but somewhere else, you know, not where not coming back home. I was going to create a community somewhere else, you know, because um, that's what we're always encouraged to do. And coming back here was. Um, was really hard because I was coming back to a city that I had romanticized for so long, just being away and remembering the best parts of it, but also like coming back and it being completely quiet and no one on the freeways and no one's working. We barely were able to work. And when we were lucky, we were, you know, um, but also deciding to move here and starting my life all over again at 40. I'm 41 now, but like it's finally gotten to a point where all this I left Atlanta so that I can finish my master's and get that. And it was probably the, it was the best thing that I did for myself because I know who I am now. Um, and it's reminded me of who I am, but also like when you have that much momentum going and then it's like cut and you have to move away from this community that you spent five years in coming back here. Of course I was like planting seeds and here's my work, you know, um, someone take me, please, you know, something <laughs> happen, please. Um, it, it took a while and it's finally starting to like, it, like I started to feel normal again, yeah. you know, um, so much happened with all of us during that time, you know? So yeah. 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 yeah Another reason to create positive, like good feeling, like work that makes you feel good, yeah. you know, <laughs> so much is going on right now. And that's one of the things that I appreciate so much about this piece again is just walking past it first of all it being kind of unexpected where where it is and mm -hmm. then you walk past it and you're able to take a breath for a minute and just have a moment and kind of forget some other things that are going mm -hmm. on during the day yeah. in life and it really does capture you for just a second um to give a little bit of i don't know yourself back yeah um which is beautiful <laughs> And then I guess, so talking about coming back to land, your whole career and moving and going back and forth and still creating art throughout all of it, do you have any advice for young artists and especially young queer artists that are coming up or using their identity in some way in their work? Do you have any advice for them? Uh, yes. I, um, I, I do you. You yeah. know, like make work that is completely sincere, like radically sincere and be unapologetic about it. You know, like that's, that's all I can ask for. I, that's all I could want to be. And that's all I want for my family. Um, I, this world is meant for all of us, you know? So like, I, it's just finding our space within, within this time and making something of it and, you know, learning your history. I had to learn my history to even realize like where I land, you know, and that's helped a lot with me just becoming who I am. But, you know, like um, just be unapologetic and just make what you need to make, you know. Yeah. That's here, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, before I say thank you again to you one more time, um, <laughs> is there anything else that you want to talk about with this piece in particular? Um, anything that you're particularly proud about with this piece? <laughs> I um I am just proud that it's it's still up. <laughs> I um I I was so nervous. <laughs> uh, but I I'm just I'm just like I said I can't thank y'all enough. Um I am extremely grateful to have this opportunity because I haven't there was a point a few months like the past couple of years where I just didn't know if I would ever create or show again, you know. Um so coming back here and knowing and coming into being invited into this community and making work on this level out of faith is is all I can ask for. So I hope that it's I hope that when you with anyone that sees this work feels that embrace when you see my work, you know. Yeah, because I'm hugging you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so yeah, much, thank you. Roberto. Thank you. you. You're saying thank you. We can't say thank you. <laughs> None of this could happen without you. Yeah. And 
you just blew it out of the water. <laughs> and we're ecstatic about everything. Everyone in Fairburn is just so ecstatic about yeah. it. And thank you for giving us a little piece of you and your practice and providing <laughs> some light and healing and transformation and understanding in, in the city of Fairburn. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> so we're going to open it up to any questions from you guys. We have a few minutes here, about like 10 minutes, if we want to go back and forth. Yeah, and we'll start it so, off. Um, thank you for being here. I uh, and connect it to your artistic vision and what it means, because it seems so amazingly unique even at night. It, I, I like it in the day and the night, but <laughs> at night that light just does something yeah. different. So I know yeah. that was a lot. It made me cry. Could. Yeah, that <laughs> would did. I was like, I'm bawling, you know? <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for your question. Um, uh, to go into the, I guess, what came first, you know, as far as my materials and my vision, um, that is actually kind of a little, a little wild, you know. Um, I, 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 when I was making these pieces, when I was making in the past, when I've made forms, I've, I've wanted to show tension, and but it's also scar tissue you know, and the scar tissue that I've been creating and healing and mending and protecting and loving, it's, um, it, I wanted to make it not just about, you know, my queerness, but I wanted to kind of have it be universal, you know, so my research kind of led me into something, uh, into fibrosis, you know, and fibrosis not making your body the way it heals at points, can create knots. And sometimes that's not um, the best thing, of course, you know. And I had started making knots, referencing growing up doing harder floors and being surrounded by different species of wood and seeing the knots that were imperfections, basically. But knots are basically trauma that a tree goes through when it's alive, you know? And so it's a different, it's a, it's a form of, it's a, it's language without even, it's a physical form like that's telling and making these pieces and making these forms and trying to make it universal and coming across fibrosis is also, unfortunately, um, coming back here, I came back to take care of my family and, uh, COVID took a toll on everyone and it took my mom and my mom, was in the ICU for about a month and, you know, she was completely under life support, everything. And every day I was there with her from like nine at night until six, seven in the morning, just waiting for her to get her lungs um, x-rayed because I didn't, I was scared that there would be fibrosis. Um, so this whole time, you know, that I'm making this work and then when my family, my mother was diagnosed with fibrosis. I knew that she was, you know, there was only limited time left. So it, it's just funny because like, I, I think about that a lot. And I think about all this time I spent researching this thing, trying to tie it into these forms that I'm creating and these installations that I'm making about trauma and healing and scarring. And it's something that it almost felt like it was preparing me for what I was about to experience. And so as far as like what came first, I, I just follow my intuition and I just let that, I just kind of go forward in that sense, you know? So like, um, yeah, it's, I just have to trust what I do and what I make and know that eventually it's gonna get past the ugly phase and it's gonna be lit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, not to get like heavy, heavy, but you know, it's that question. It's, um, it's impossible for me not to talk about my, you know, like making these altars, creating it, um, and what influences me without, I knew that my mother would become part of my art making and she always has been, you know, um, but in a different way now, you know? So yeah, she's with me, you know, that's what I believe. <laughs> and, um, Secondly, I guess I'm so sorry I went on like a rant, but <laughs> the second the second part to your question was can the you, use of light. And uh -huh. how it so transforms mm -hmm. the work. Yeah, it's <laughs> I I grew up um 
a, a, I was, I'm a nerd, you know, like I, I love sci-fi and fantasy and, um, but also like, I, I think that there's a little stardust in all of us, you know? So like I, we are all, I, I, I just wanted, I needed to illuminate things and I, it just activates it in a completely different way. And, and the material just times a hundred, you know, it just makes it, um, it just makes it glow even that much more, you know, but, um, I, you know, I said it before, like I, I aim for an ethereal setting, but it, you know, try not to be grotesque. <laughs> and one of the really cool things if you didn't know this, uh, that Roberto told me is the drum heads that are at the very end of each of the tendrils, the connection points, mm -hmm. um, you actually went in and designed those yourself. Like yeah. You pulled off parts of the layers so that mm -hmm. the light would come through at different points and stay in that layer point. Mm -hmm. just yeah. Yeah. It's so much fun. I have so much fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. I was a little blown away when you started talking about the materials um, and it was from paper <laughs> because I felt like just looking at it that I could just dive in that portal and just be nice and silky and, and, and just ooh, feeling so good. It looks like silk material. Yeah. Um, and so I was really amazed at that you know because i was thinking that's exactly what it was before you all talked about it mm -hmm. and how you came about you know using that material mm -hmm. but the other thing about <clears throat> light Thank you. light is just i was reading a book it's just ladder to the light and it talks about a scene like in a stadium where everything is pitch black and just one flicker of a match will have a dynamic effect on that stadium. Yeah. So light, I, I, just, I can see that in so many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you, the light that we carry wherever we go, mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't know how well, how it illuminates to other people until they say something to you. They'll say, oh, you know, and it's it's amazing. So light, light is a force mm -hmm. you know so i appreciate the way you use it thank you so much yeah. i appreciate it thank you so much yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took me a while but i i got there yeah. and i'm still learning so it's it's wow. i'm that piece is awesome. thank i appreciate you very much <laughs> thank you <laughs> a couple more questions if anybody has any Thank you. I'm just curious, what are your plans for the piece once you, you take the installation down? <laughs> Although I would love for it to stay, but what, what's your plan for it? Uh, I definitely am. It's making any work, um, especially this one. It's um, it's important to document, you know, so like I've documented heavily. Y'all have helped out so much with that, too. Um, and just the experience alone is um, it's it just, it's helped me create help my portfolio you know so like it's it's definitely helped me um uh, pitch different projects to uh either galleries or shows or just anything you know coming up and i try to stay as involved as possible or i try to you know um but as far as the piece you know like um it's it's gonna come down and go into storage you know and, um that's that's the thing about my work is um all this paper and as it flashes through um it's paper that i've just added on to and removed since 2017 you know so like every time this piece every time a piece comes up it's it's giving it life again and then it's like a rebirth almost it comes down it goes back away and then i make something else and then i'm like kind of blown away by seeing it again you know so i I always end up just storing it, you know, but I, of course, for sure, I would love to like set it up somewhere else soon. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And that being said, are there any projects or anything you're working on right now that you're excited about? Yeah. Can... yeah. Uh, yes, please. Thank you for asking. Um, I am making miniature versions of these, of the portals and I have three miniature 
the largest is 12 by 12, and it's for um, Swan Coach House Gallery with oh, Jacob. Nice. Yeah, so um, that show, I'm installing that tomorrow, and I, I have that coming up. So the opening for that, I think, is in a week or so. And um, I also have been in contact with a curator from Mexico City, and I'm finally, I, I start my residency since I'm international, I start that residency um, first week of November and just through Zoom and we meet like once a week and with the goal of uh, going through February to Mexico City's Art Week. So I'll be part of that. So I'm super excited about that. Finally. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited about that. I just, I want to see Frida, you know, yeah. like I want to see her house. <laughs> but I, yeah, that's that's what I have going on right now. So I'm super blessed and grateful and yeah, I'm going to keep working hard. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. On this piece, on all the other pieces. Thank you.